Unreal Engine 3 uses a per-pixel lighting model, which allows for advanced effects like high dynamic range lighting, as you can see on this fountain. Assets in this scene were constructed in three steps. First, we build a very detailed high-resolution mesh. Then, we build a low-resolution version of that mesh. Finally, our mesh processing tool then compares the two models and stores the difference in a normal map texture. The engine then draws the low-res asset with this normal map, giving the impression that we are displaying its high-poly counterpart in real time. This allows display of immensely detailed worlds at excellent frame rates. The scene you're seeing here is around a million polygons of total in-game assets, which came from about 200 million polygons of source art. Now we'll take a look at some of the new lighting features in Unreal Engine 3. This light, for example, has a cowling that casts soft shadows on the scene around it. This is accomplished using a light function. In this case, the function takes two cube maps, one very crisp and the other blurred, and interpolates between them based on the distance to a surface. As the light begins to move away from the wall, the shadows will blur before fading out completely. This effect simulates area lighting. Other lighting features included in Unreal Engine 3 are height fog, which we here, and virtual displacement mapping. Using virtual displacement mapping, these bricks appear to have depth, visible sides, and even grout holding them together. As demonstrated in wireframe mode, however, they're constructed from very few polygons. This flickering light is another example of a light function. Light functions allow an artist to assign materials to any light and control how that light displays within the world. In this case, it processes a simple change in brightness. Unreal Engine 3 allows total control over how objects interact with the environment. All of the objects in this scene are physically responsive in some way. They can be picked up and thrown around within the environment. The refrigerator behaves as one would expect it to, demonstrating hinges, independent contents, removable shelves, and constrained drawers. It is also possible to have flexible objects like tubes and cables, or complex hierarchies of bones, such as in a ragdoll model. These physical objects can also have lighting and material effects. And this demonstration shows objects that glow, give off light, and so on. Physical objects cast dynamic shadows as you would expect. With the support knocked out of the way, the entire system collapses, and we can see that the light casts shadow from above as well. Complex materials are the key to next-generation graphics in games. Unreal Engine 3 gives artists complete control over powerful pixel shader 2.0 and 3.0 effects. All materials in this level were created by a level designer and required no programming whatsoever. On the right, we have an iridescent material. On the left, a complex panning material with an emissive channel. Virtual displacement mapping on this cube creates the illusion that the veins on the grill obscure each other. Viewed in wireframe, however, it's clear this detail is in the material and not the mesh. This next object demonstrates frame buffer distortion. As the camera moves around the object, the surrounding scene becomes distorted by the material. The bloom effect on this object is enabled through high dynamic range lighting. The material for the object's emissive channel is multiplied by a high value to exaggerate the effect. Here we have another lighting function, a stained glass environment that is being rotated along the cube. Because it's a light, it both attenuates and shadows realistically. The light projects on the character correctly and also soft shadows the world around him. <coughs> Let's look at the character detail that can be achieved in Unreal Engine 3. This particular model is about 7,500 polygons for the low-resolution mesh, and about 2 million polygons for the high-resolution mesh. 
Many of the smaller details in the high-res mesh, like the wrinkles around its mouth and throat, were hand-painted into the normal map. This lets artists add an extra level of detail without having to model it by hand. The wings on this character demonstrate light transmission. The wing material has a mask, which tells it how much light to allow through to the other side. The veins in the wing membrane get darker when they block light from passing through from the other side. This is another example of a high polygon creature. This character is around 8 million polygons for the high resolution mesh, and about 8500 for the low. It clearly illustrates the amount of detail possible in Unreal Engine 3 characters, both from in-game polygons and from a normal map. Now let's see some of these characters in action. We hebben net een technische demo gezien van de nieuwe Unreal 3 engine ontwikkeld door Epic met de steun van Nvidia. Uh, de, grafi de graphics zijn werkelijk onvoorstelbaar, nog nooit zoiets moois gezien. Kijk maar eens naar deze beelden. Unreal Engine 3 uses a per pixel lighting model, which allows for advanced effects like high dynamic range lighting, as you can see on this fountain. Assets in this scene were constructed in three steps. First, we build a very detailed high resolution mesh. Then, resolution version of that mesh. Finally, our mesh processing tool then compares the two models and stores the difference in a normal map texture. The engine then draws the low-res asset with this normal map, giving the impression that we're displaying its high-poly counterpart in real time. This allows display of immensely detailed worlds at excellent frame rates. The scene you're seeing here is around a million polygons of total in-game assets, which came from about 200 million polygons of source art. Now we'll take a look at some of the new lighting features in Unreal Engine 3. This light, for example, has a cowling that casts soft shadows on the scene around it. This is accomplished using a light function. In this case, the function takes two cube maps, one very crisp and the other blurred and interpolates between them based on the distance to a surface. As the light begins to move away from the wall, the shadows will blur before fading out completely. This effect simulates area lighting. Other lighting features included in Unreal Engine 3 are height fog, demonstrated here, and virtual displacement mapping. Using virtual displacement mapping, these bricks appear to have depth, visible sides, and even grout holding them together. As demonstrated in wireframe mode, however, they're constructed from very few polygons. This flickering light is another example of a light function. Light functions allow an artist to assign materials to any light and control how that light displays within the world. In this case, it processes a simple change in brightness. Unreal Engine 3 allows total control over how objects interact with the environment. All of the objects in this scene are physically responsive in some way. They can be picked up and thrown around within the environment. The refrigerator behaves as one would expect it to, demonstrating hinges, independent contents, removable shelves, and constrained drawers. It is also possible to have flexible objects like tubes and cables, or complex hierarchies of bones, such as in a ragdoll model. These physical objects can also have lighting and material effects. And this demonstration shows objects that glow, give off light, and so on. Physical objects cast dynamic shadows as you would expect. With the support knocked out of the way, the entire system collapses, and we can see that the light casts shadow from above as well. Complex materials are the key to next generation graphics and games. Unreal Engine 3 gives artists complete control over powerful pixel shader 2.0 and 3.0 effects. All materials in this level were created by a level designer and required no programming whatsoever. 
On the right, we have an iridescent material. On the left, a complex panning material with an emissive channel. Virtual displacement mapping on this cube creates the illusion that the veins on the grill obscure each other. Viewed in wireframe, however, it's clear this detail is in the material and not the mesh. This next object demonstrates frame buffer distortion. As the camera moves around the object, the surrounding scene becomes distorted by the material. The bloom effect on this object is enabled through high dynamic range lighting. The material for the object's emissive channel is multiplied by a high value to exaggerate the effect. Here we have another lighting function, a stained glass environment that is being rotated along the cube. Because it's a light, it both attenuates and shadows realistically. The light projects on the character correctly and also soft shadows the world around it. Let's look at the character detail that can be achieved in Unreal Engine 3. This particular model is about 7,500 polygons for the low resolution mesh and about 2 million polygons for the high resolution mesh. Many of the smaller details in the high res mesh, like the wrinkles around its mouth and throat, were hand painted into the normal map. This lets artists add an extra level of detail without having to model it by hand. The wings on this character demonstrate light transmission. The wing material has a mask which tells it how much light to allow through to the other side. The veins in the wing membrane get darker when they block light from passing through from the other side. This is another example of a high polygon creature. This character is around 8 million polygons for the high resolution mesh and about 8500 for the low. It clearly illustrates the amount of detail possible in Unreal Engine 3 characters, both from in-game polygons and from a normal map. Now let's see some of these characters in action. things we've added is ambient occlusion technology. Uh, this technology enables us to add much more realistic dynamic shadows to scenes um, using a pixel shader technique. So a pixel shader traverses every single pixel in the scene and looks at how light reflects around and uses that to generate much more realistic shadow highlights on the objects in the scene. You know, so you see much more definition in individual objects and they pop out from the backgrounds. This technique works uh, for characters as well. We've done significant work on the character pipeline. On the left here, you see Marcus Phoenix as he appears in Gears of War. And on the right, he's being rendered in our new character pipeline. You see there's much greater contrast in the shadows, um, much greater specular lighting bouncing off of the thing. You see a lot more detail in the character overall. It is also a lot more efficient and enables us to render a lot more characters in scenes. Now, uh, if you remember in Gears of War, you fought the Locust Horde, where the Horde consisted of maybe like five or six Locusts. But now we can really build scenes containing hordes of creatures. And here we have over 100 creatures running around in real time using flocking technology. We've also improved the water technology on Unreal Engine 3. Besides the realistic water physics simulation running underneath, we also have realistic specular and environment reflections bouncing off of the water. So it captures much more of the realistic liquidy feel you see there. You also have more dynamic interaction with the water, so more realistic sound effects, more realistic splashes using particle systems. And this scales to very large environments. So you can build your game taking place on a deserted island, or you can build that jet skiing game you always wanted to build using Unreal Engine 3. The engine now scales to much larger scenes like that. Now, a matinee is the system we use to build all of the Gears of War cinematics, you know, the real-time cinematics that play back in engine. We've uh, substantially improved this to give, uh, to give artists movie director class control over all of the objects in the scene, over cameras, over cuts. And we have a real-time preview now in engine that gives you all of the visual effects of the real cinematic uh, 
at a level that's not even seen in Hollywood now in their preview tools. We've also incorporated AGIA's soft body physics simulation tool, uh, which enables us to, so, to simulate objects that are realistically elastic and fluidy, like you see with this cube of meat we built here. You, know, you can see the player can interact with that, push little pieces of it around, and it's all very elastic and buoyant. This also scales well to fluids. So here you have fluids moving around with viscosity and surface tension, retaining their shape. This enables artists to build environments that are much more organic and real worldish. You can also destroy them. So the, the thing that we do after, after we spend a few years building a beautiful game world, the first thing gamers want to do is blow it up. And now they can do that. So we've implemented some real-time structural analysis tools in Unreal Engine 3 that can determine how objects break apart into pieces given stresses and strains. And here we've applied that so that we have a, a building built out of concrete with a steel structure underneath. And you can see the player can go around and blow holes in the concrete, destroy the structure of the level while the steel remains underneath. This is just one of the tools that enables designers to create far more realistic and destructible environments in future games. And these are just...
It is 2018 and Unreal Engine 4 keeps continuing on developing and how amazing it looks and what it can do. GDC 2018 was just a couple of days ago and here the guys from Epic Games showed which fantastic future the Unreal Engine 4 um, is going to have and what it can do. And also two very impressive things I found were facial technology, facial uh, capturing, like we have seen in Hellblade last year, maybe you still remember that game. But this GDC they have shown some fantastic new stuff, starting a digital performance in Unreal Engine 4 by Andy Serkis, and you might know him as Gollum from Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. And he, f he plays a digital human and it looks like himself, um, but he, uh, but later you, you will see that this facial recording can also be used for an alien-like character and um, yeah it's, it has a lot of, of usability and the other demo we're going to see is also a real-time performance which looks very realistic and what you're going to see more in this video is um, two show or actually two showcases from the same guy that brought you the Unreal Engine 4 demos of Khaleesi from Game of Thrones and from Dwarf, Dwarf Balin from uh, The Hobbit and uh, yeah you're going to watch two special characters and I'm not going to um, I'm not going to spoil which one they are but I would say have fun with this showcase with 2018 Unreal Engine 4 characters because they look very amazing very convincing very real so as I would say enjoy this showcase Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable recorded time. <laughs> and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out! Brief candle! <laughs> Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. <laughs> it is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Hello, I'm Siren, and I'm a digital human. I was created by an international team of artists and engineers who wanted to challenge our ideas of what a synthetic human could be. I've got state-of-the-art real-time graphics and an unprecedented level of detail in my eyes, skin and hair. Cool, right? But I'm more than just a collection of fancy pixels. I'm actually being driven by a real human actress and her dynamic motion capture through Unreal Engine. So what are you waiting for? Come meet me at the Vicon booth and see for yourself. What's the story with all the elevators lately? I heard Kylo Ren destroyed the one over in D Sector. If you ask me, who's ever in charge of this place should be transferred to a hot <laughs> She heard us? Yeah, I think she heard us. At least we blend in for once. Tomorrow 
And tomorrow. And tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable recorded time. <laughs> and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out! Brief candle! <laughs> Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. <laughs> it is a tale told by an idiot. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing.
Adaptation. The ability to learn from past experience. The use of knowledge to alter their environment. These virtues defined our creators and drove them to the brink of destruction. But we cannot exist without them. We must save her. within us. Humanity has always had the potential to recognize its flaws and choose a better way. Can we save humanity? Was bringing her here the right choice? Hi guys, this is Joe Garth from Quixel. Thousands of you have asked how our latest real-time cinematic Rebirth was made, almost not believing that the technology has come to this point where photorealism is possible in real time. But we're here to tell you that finally, photorealism is now not only possible in real time and for games being made right now, but that when you use these cutting edge real-time tools and assets, it's incredibly easy. What you see is not pre-rendered, this is running in real time on a mainstream gaming computer with a single 1080 Ti. Not only that, this is a fully interactive world. It's completely playable. I'm just going to jump into the game here and have a quick run around the scene. So as you can see, you can fully interact with the physics objects of the scene. Everything has collisions. If I push this little rock off here, it's going to go falling down. The other great thing that we can do is change the lighting. Full dynamic lighting helps us work much faster. We could also make the most of Unreal Engine's volumetric effects. The dynamic lighting really helped us on our short film. It meant that we could iterate very quickly on our shots and adjust things in real time. We never had to stop and wait for renders. Everything could be adjusted right then and there. Here you can see me tweaking the fog and some of Unreal Engine's post-processing effects, like chromatic aberration, vignetting, and film grain. There's no smoke and mirrors here, guys. There's no real-time ray tracing, just the vanilla version of Unreal Engine 4, combined with the photorealistic and massive Megascans asset library, fully optimized for games and VR out of the box. By having a world-class game engine and all the photorealistic building blocks you could possibly need from day one, you can focus your creativity where it matters the most, building fun, meaningful, and immersive experiences. We are one step closer to fully interactive worlds, indistinguishable from reality. And the good thing is, with Unreal Engine and Megascans, we're able to build it with ease. Stay tuned for tutorials this summer. This is Joe Garth from Quixel, signing off. Until next time. Here is the future of Unreal Engine running live on a PlayStation 5. Awesome. Let's take a look at it. This has to be the right way. Before we continue, let's stop a moment and take a look at some of the key features of this demo. Much of what you see was built with Quixel Megascan assets, but instead of using the game versions, we used the cinematic versions which would typically only be used in film. There are around a million triangles each, and thanks to virtual texturing, they all use 8K textures as well. 
nanite can render an insane number of triangles very quickly. There are over a billion triangles of source geometry in each frame that nanite crunches down losslessly to around 20 million drawn triangles. What does that many triangles look like? This isn't noise. These are the triangles, each a different color. Most are so small that they look like noise. Nanite achieves detail down to the pixel, which means triangles are often the size of pixels. This amount of geometric detail requires shadows to be pixel accurate as well, and Nanite can do that too. Speaking of lighting, all of the lighting in this demo is completely dynamic, with the power of Lumen that even includes multi-bounce global illumination. No light maps, no baking here. Without GI, all of that beautiful lighting is gone. With Lumen enabled, we can move the light and the bounce changes instantly. Okay, let's keep going. We've made some great additions to our audio system as well. Convolution Reverb allows us to measure reverberation characteristics of real spaces, like actual caves that we sampled, and reproduce them in virtual spaces. Sound field rendering allows us to record and playback spatialized audio. All of this adds up to a more immersive experience. This swarm of bats was created with our Niagara effects system. Particles in Niagara can now talk to one another and understand their environment like never before. We've also added a ton of new functionality to run fluid simulations like you see in the water below. The demo runs on our Chaos Physics system. Here we are using it to accurately simulate the rigid bodies of the falling rocks and the cloth of her scarf. Now that the environment is so complex, we've needed to greatly improve our animation systems to adapt. We've added predictive foot placement and motion warping, which dynamically modifies IK and body position to look more natural. For the character to more realistically interact with the environment, we've added the ability to trigger seamless contextual animation events, like her hand on the door. That's promising. Dynamic GI is amazing, not just for speeding up iteration, but also for its impact on gameplay. Nice Any light nice. source can move while it still having be. beautiful bounce lighting. Dynamic illumination means specular as well, which you can see on all the metal surfaces. You can even see the Niagara-powered bugs reacting to the light. Lumen not only reacts to moving light sources, but also changes in geometry. Remember we mentioned high poly assets? This statue was imported directly from ZBrush and is more than 33 million triangles. No baking of normal maps, no authored LODs. And we can do more than a single statue. There are nearly 500 of that exact statue at the same detail level placed in this room for a total of over 16 billion triangles from statues alone. Over this entire demo, there are hundreds of billions of triangles. With Nanite, you have limitless geometry, and with Lumen, you have fully dynamic lighting and global illumination. 
all running on a PlayStation 5. Not much time left. And this doesn't need to be constrained to small rooms. It can stretch all the way to the horizon. The portal, it's open. Don't fail me now. What's next?